All right. All right, guys, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we just thank you right now. Father, just for everybody being able to be here, uh, we're going to dive into some things, Lord, and I know you're with us. I know you'll guide us through it. I know you'll help us in this process. Um, as this subject will help others, Lord God, that we just want to be armed and ready to be able to assist those that are around us, family members, friends, uh, those that are hurting, Lord God, that we can put our arms around them with just your love and your grace and teach us how to do that. Lord God, that our minds need to be changed to understand how to. And so we want to be armed to be able to. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, real quick, Isaac and Alvina, you guys just started on Friday in Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, the Your guys' live team out there. You want to just share a couple quick minutes what 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 how friday went it of went course really good it went really good it ended up going from about 6 30 to yeah like, i want to say 6 30 to frank actually I stayed till almost midnight we just yeah it was almost really midnight time. well that's how we started too Back mm -hmm. people would well we would meet in the barn <laughs> and tracy we would yeah sometimes people people would go and, and come back, you know, bring people, especially people that were sick and we'd be laying hands on people till one or two in the morning. Yeah. And that's why he, uh, Frank said that I think he wanted to bring his nephew one. Yeah. Um, so his nephew's supposed to join us and at least check it out. And, see. and then I think one of his youngest son and then Alvina's, uh, brother and sister-in-law yeah. will be here this week. Awesome. So it started with three the first week. It's going to be about five or six the second week, and then we'll see it grow from there. Now, were, you, were your daughters there with you? Um, not last she, week. No. Okay. She this was, week she they was will here, be. Out. But they, they didn't join us this week. How's your How's your niece doing? She's doing really good. She's been actually. I'm proud of her. She's been praying with us. The other day we saw a guy at Winko and she um, put her hand out to pray for him. To, like she's been really, she's been really into it now. What, what, just because I, so everybody know we were in Portland last, uh, come on in, man. Um, well, two weeks ago now, I don't even, it feels like it was yeah. yesterday, but it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. So the, how old is she? She's 15. She'll be 16 in May. 15. And so so 16 years old. So we were, we were praying with this girl. We were just kind of praying with everyone in the, in the house because uh, they're, you know, we were getting ready to leave and, and everything is tornado awake or asleep. She's asleep. <laughs> okay. Shh. Cause tropical storm is stirring. <laughs> um, and so and anyway, so we were ministering. I just pray for all the family members and one of the girls, as I was just praying with her, I just, just felt in the spirit. There was some stuff going on. She was being tormented at night in her sleep. It just kind of spoke to that. And she, she, where was she at in her faith before that? The funny uh, thing is she believes in God. She knows uh, she's, she's gone to church with us and stuff, but I didn't, I will, I had a feeling because when I would talk to her, I talked to her a lot and I kind of got that distance feeling when I would, or not distance, but like a disconnect. She wouldn't say anything bad or against it. But you know, when you're talking to someone, they kind of have that disconnect with it. So um, I just didn't say anything because I didn't, I don't want to force anything on them at, at the same time, but I'm still going to keep talking to them about it. Sure. And, um, after you guys had left, she told, she told me that she was, she actually prayed because she said that she felt like a disconnection from God. Not that she didn't believe in him anymore. It's just, she just didn't feel him. And she prayed like, God, give me some type of confirmation that you're, that you're real and you're there. And she goes, that's so funny that he, that they came and she goes, I felt like he picked me out of everybody. And God spoke through him, meaning you to show me confirmation. Like I'm here and, you know, like told you something that there was no way for you to know yeah it, it it's amazing when when god can move in and, and it's just it, it's a supernatural thing it was very natural it wasn't weird it wasn't 
You know, I didn't throw my, my co- suit coat at someone and then fall back. It, it was just, we were just praying, right? And just, just, yeah. just as the spirit operates through a believer, you know, God just kind of yeah, you know, just worked through that. And, and the faith of a 17 year old little girl, you know, just because she couldn't sleep, she was being tormented at night. And, and yeah. by me speaking to that, it was, oh my gosh, God's aware. And God's yeah. real. And now she's over here praying with people at the grocery store two weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so that went, uh, actually, if we have a couple minutes, um, I just want to talk about that a little bit. So we saw the guy and um, we kind of, he stuck out because he had like some powder on his head. And um, he had, like, something in his ear. I thought it was cotton balls, but Alvina was like, no, it's, like, some kind of cream or something. And so it was very noticeable throughout the store. It was that Winkle that we took you for the – on your guys' way back. Okay, yeah. yeah, So so we go in there, and then we notice that, and then we're on the way out. We see him again, and then I'm like – And I'll admit, I thought in my head, I was like, we should pray for him, but I don't know why – I just kept walking. I don't know if I just, I don't know why I just kept walking. So we saw him the first time. Then we yeah. saw him again the second time. Then we left Winko and we I was went like, to the gas station. Yeah, yeah, I was like, let's stop at the uh, gas station to get yeah. some air for the tire. And then lo and behold, he pulls up, gets out. <laughs> I was like, okay. This and is Alvina's time. like, Isaac, you better go pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo. You're going to tell me I got to do it. But so I go over there and I'm not even going to lie. I, wa- I, I was very um, cautious because he looked like he was very aware of what was going on around him. Like kind of jumpy. Kind of, yeah, a little bit jumpy. So I was like, okay. I was like, uh, I, I'm just going to have to see how to approach this person. So I went over there and I like knocked on the red box, which was right by his car. And then I just like, literally clicked it once and then like looked back and he rolls down his window and he says uh hey is the red box not working or something and i was like hey perfect opportunity i was like no actually man i was here i wonder if i could pray for you and he goes yeah of course man and he had a cigarette in his hand he goes well we can't smoke and pray god (laughs) and i was like well you can smoke if you want to we can still pray god (laughs) You know, and he goes, no, that's disrespectful. I'll put it out. So he puts it out. And then uh, we start praying. He was a believer. He was, he showed me uh, two years ago a picture of him. He was in the Marines. He had hair. He was in perfect, like, fit shape, uh, better shape than I'm in. Definitely, like, really, 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 like, you could tell that he was one of those guys probably go jogging every morning. And uh, he just literally he like he, I when I, I saw him, I thought he had cancer. He looked like he, yeah. he had no hair. He was really skinny. The the look usually people have when they have cancer. Yeah. So he goes in and he tells me that he was in the Marines. There was some kind of chemical that they were exposed yes, to. Comes in. And um, so there was like 40. Agent Orange. Yeah, there was 40 people in his platoon or whatever. And out of the 40 people, he's the only one that's still alive and getting treatments. Wow. And he said treatments last like 10 to 12 hours. A yeah, day. he said they're 10 to 12 hours a day, every day of the week. And so I just prayed for him. And what was amazing, he started speaking in tongues when I was praying for him. And then he told me like, man, you know, this, like, he was just like, I'm so glad, you know, it must have been meant for us to meet each other today. And I told him, I was like, yeah, man, you're not going to need those treatments anymore. You're going to be healed. And he just had a total, like, relaxed look on his face. That's awesome, dude. That's- yeah. So it, it was pretty cool. That's good stuff, man. I, I, I told y'all, South Portland, they, gonna, yeah. they need to get rocked. South yeah. Portland needs to get rocked, man. Is you know... We, we, we had been to Portland several times. Yeah. I mean, we were just there and dude, the city's just boarded up. Like we would go, we would go at nighttime and everybody was out. Everybody be walking around there. And we went and it was, 
what would you say about 50 percent of the of the businesses are boarded up yeah at least 50 yeah and uh about three days after you guys left they lit the courthouse on fire again oh, yeah. yeah yeah well yeah because they had bum rushed the government building before we got there yeah as well so yeah no that that's that's crazy hi cat hi, how's washington wet can you hear me can you hear me cat okay her audio's setting up can you hear us cat oh she's getting set up there okay well we know we know you're online cat um she's she's in washington state of washington um no dude that that's awesome isaac dude um and and it just gets it just gets better as you get braver it just gets better yeah we were talking about that and isaac was like remember angel said once you start you're they're just gonna start popping up out of nowhere i was like yeah i'm starting to see that now <laughs> it, it just you can't help it you, yeah you know, when you know that god actually is alive and not as just he's not just like a theological teaching yeah you know the hey amanda the the concept becomes totally different the focus yeah. becomes totally different because before before when it's just religion and teaching and preaching you know it's kind of like well hey why don't you come to church with me on sunday so my pastor can tell you about god yeah you know, in in you know that's kind of the route instead of I'm a believer. Um, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. I can actually do something about this situation and not have to call on a specialist because the specialist yeah. lives inside of me. Yeah. And it's an amazing difference. Right. You know. <laughs> and so that that that's cool. Um, I want to dive into to the subject. Um, Kat, we know we see, I know you were you your your you were your screen was going in and out. And so, but we know you're on online, Katarina. Thank you for, for logging in. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be there. Uh, one, one thing before we dive in, because I want to dive in, because I, I know it's going to take a little bit. Um, this Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. our time, uh, I'm going to be preaching online to several thousand people in Pakistan. And so we're doing an evangelistic healing crusade. Um, I know for a lot of you that have given financially, this has, it had been a blessing, all the finances over there. We rented several buses that will be transporting people in, um, all over the city in that, in that region of Pakistan. And, uh, we're expecting upwards of 1800 to 2000 people, uh, that will be present on an online event la last time. Uh, we did this. It'll, it's. I, I'm gonna. Once it's posted, I'll be able to upload it straight to our Facebook page. If you're, it'll it'll record. You can watch it live. You can watch it later if you want to check it out. How they, but it'll be a. Um, if you get a chance, at least just watch five minutes. It's it's crazy. Can you send us the link? Yeah. Well. Um, well. Once once they do it live, because I don't. It's not through my feed. It's through theirs. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it on my Facebook page Saturday morning. Um, we were talking about that. We were trying to figure out if we could do Zoom because they, they run it through Skype. For them, Skype's clear for them to get a better reception. And so, I was hoping if we if we could do it through Zoom, then I can upload it to YouTube, and then I could send that link ahead of time to everyone where they can see that. Even if if you're not able to see it live, I and and. And you're not able to. I can get it to you once it's done, and and just just for the sake of being able to see the environment, it, it's just crazy. Angel, world. Sorry, um, can I send, can I pass the link on that you sent to Anthony's friend, or yeah. do you have to send it? Wait, what, what today? Yeah. I'll tell him just send me 25 bucks and he can send it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm daily now. How, do I just send the link that you that share? Yeah, you can yeah, you can share it. Okay. 
So, oh, okay, okay. Um, I want, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to dive in real quick or dive in because we've got about 45, 50 minutes. Um, I put the topic on the text when I emailed everyone because I know that would spark an interest because of the nature of the topic. Uh, seven steps to demonic possession. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about it because you can kind of go, well, what do you mean? You know, as we talk about each thing, and I'm going to kind of share some things in scripture and different things, um, it's pretty practical. And yeah. you're going to find yourselves at times, maybe in, in those moments, you'll see yourself well, as I'm saying some of this um, and defining it a little bit. You'll see sometimes maybe where your life has been at certain times, and you'll definitely see people that you know that are struggling through some of this. It doesn't mean they're demon possessed in any of these stages. What it is is just showing these are, and then I'm there. It's not in any particular order necessarily. I would say the last three would be consistent in that place. Everything else is just kind of. And David, I know you don't got it. Mike, you don't have it. Um, you just follow along if you want. If, if you can take notes, I'll. I can email to you what I, I handed out a little handout to them. Um, but it's gonna, uh, you know, as we kind of go through it, and really what it has. And let me just kind of explain something before we go into it, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach. But if y'all need to ask. Ask because I want to lay a foundation here. So it's, I know it's going to, we'll have discussion, all that stuff, but I need to lay a quick foundation so everyone's on the same platform. Bible says in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve in his likeness and in his image. We talked a little bit last week about Adam's ability and his position of having dominion and authority. And in that, when Adam sinned, Adam fell. Adam was it. Adam was a is a spirit with a soul in a body. You are a spirit with a soul in a body. That's the way the Bible describes you. But he said, Paul says that you would be blessed in your spirit and your soul and in your body. He puts it in that order. There's a reason for that order. Because if you were if you were body and then soul and then spirit, what would control all those things is the first priority, which would be humanity, normal as far as just and when when when, it, when you read in the Bible and it says carnal, you know, like if you say that if you and if you go to a lot of churches and especially Pentecostal churches, if you go you're carnal, dude, that's you're about to get into a fight, you, you know. That's like saying the F word to somebody because that's not what anybody wants to be. All it means in scripture is natural thinking. You're carnal. You're natural thinking. For instance, Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 3 and 3, and he's addressing the church. And he says, why do you still think like mere human beings? So that's an odd statement to the whole world. Because to the whole world, they go, well, then what the heck am I supposed to think like then? I'm a human. But Paul's making a statement in that to a deeper truth. He's talking to believers saying, why do you still think like mere human beings? Because to a born again person, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 says this, that you are a new creation in Christ. You know, old things have passed away. All things have become new. And then here's a key part. And all things are of God. Why is that important? Because when you're when Adam sinned, his spirit died. Romans eight, Romans six says that you were dead in your trespasses and sins. His spirit died. His soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our personality, our character, our thinking, our processing. That's our that's your soul. That's you. That's the you that's you. Romans 12, 2 says this. Paul says that you, he says that you, that you be, do be transformed. Literally means metamorphosed, like a butterfly. It's the only time, the only, it, 
The only other time it uses that same Greek word is when it is talking about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, when he's lit up and he's floating. <laughs> it says it act, that's the only other time in the entire Bible that it uses that word. So he's metamorphosed. He's like a butterfly. And that's, that's the, the reality. That's the truth that takes place. So this is what Paul's saying. It's, he says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, patterned to this world, but be metamorphosed by the renewing or the changing of your mind. A lot of times in the Christian church, we talk about how to, uh, how to be changed, how we change our behaviors, how we change all of this or how we change that. And so in, if you go to reformed or evangelical churches, what are they going to tell you? They're going to tell you uh, as far as be in the word, read the word. And those, that's true. That's a great thing. You go to Pentecostal churches, they're going to tell you run the aisles, talk in tongues. And that's a great thing to do. And yet I find people very immature that have been doing that for 20 years. <laughs> and there's there's no transformation they're still they're still jerks they're, they're still you, you, you know they're still mean they're still very abrasive there's no transformation they look nothing like jesus at all they look like they have always looked from the beginning of outside of the fact that they carry a bible at times and that they might go to church sometimes and on a really great day um, they'll put a dollar in the offering plate, you, you know, and, and that's really about the extent of it. There's no, no, no change to it. Um, and, and that's, that's a problem because you're supposed to look transformed. I didn't say you're supposed to look Westernized Christian, but you ain't supposed to look like you did when you got there. That's for sure. And, and I'm not, and let me rephrase what I'm saying. I'm not talking about look in the sense of, Look, I think that changes naturally at times for some people, you know, um, I wore a certain type of clothing before I don't, I still, you know, I've, I don't have a problem wearing Dickies, you know, but you know, you know, I was in that environment. That was my world, which was the, the Cholo world. It's funny. Cause, um, Alvina's husband, Isaac, when we <laughs> met, he actually told me a story where he tried to kill my brother. It was, it was, it was an assassination attempt, honestly, because my brother was, he was a rapper and, and, and where Isaac was at at the time, he's originally from Southern California. And that's why every time we go to Portland, we still put the boxing gloves and get, you know, we still, <laughs> but, but no, that in our first conversation, our first meet, he was actually told me a story that before Christ and before my brother met Christ, him and, his, him and some homies were on their way to go kill my brother. Isaac, am I lying? No, not at all. <laughs> and, and so that, that's the truth. And so, but there was a transformation that took place in the life of my brother and in the life of Isaac. Now they talk, they get along. I told my brother and he was like, he was all tripped out by that, you know, because now my brother has met a lot of people that have wanted to murder him, you, you know, through the years because of what he did in music and everything else. But there was a transformation. So anyways, so Adam, when Adam died, his spirit died, his soul was still there. His body obviously deteriorated after a period of time. He died at the age of 900 and something when that took place. But the reason why I'm saying I'm bringing that up is this. We're going to talk about seven steps to demonic possession. And I want to point out something very important. Whether it's God or whether it's the devil or demons or darkness, or whatever you want to call it, there's only one way that the spirit realm gets involved with reality. That's through your soul. You're, imagine your soul being the microphone and whatever spirit you're connected to is the cable that attaches to it. I could have some, I could have an HDMI connected to my TV, but if it's not connected to the other end, there's nothing that pops out on the other side. It's detached. 
So the spirit realm cannot touch tangible reality unless it flows through a soul. That's whether we're talking about the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, or whatever, or you're talking about the demonic. Both work the same because they both come from the same realm. This is why when the mindset, let's say we've all been to churches at times, and we've heard churches say, we're praying for God to bring revival. That's why that doesn't work. Yeah. Praying for revival doesn't do anything. You being revival and doing something makes all the difference in the world because a human being has to be involved in any part of it. Jesus talked about demons and, and, and darkness and the devil and all of these things. And we see how the Bible says that, Paul, that Jesus makes a statement. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Hmm. And then we see in the book of Acts, a couple moments where people are demon possessed and it names them that way. But reality, most of the book of Acts is really about like other people beating up the apostles. <laughs> right? It's like, it's like the religious leaders whipping them, beating them, punching them, kicking them, throwing rocks. Uh, then they go to this other city in, in Iconium and Antioch and Acts 14 and Paul gets drug out to the edge of the city and he gets beaten and left for dead. And it never says a demon did it. It never says a devil did it. It always says a human did it. Because this is how spirit touches reality. How many times have you ever turned on the news and, and, and Channel 10 says, a demonic spirit molested a four-year-old girl? No. It'll say, and this person, that's reality. Or it doesn't say a demon spirit stabbed five people or shot five people or, or put a bomb and, and a, that demonic spirit killed. That's not, how, that's not how that works. A human did it. A person did it. So the soul of the person has to be involved in this process. And that's what I want to walk down through the seven steps of demonic possession in that. You going to help mom help? Did you wake up? Look at that hair. Um, and so I want to kind of go down, down this path as we kind of go down each one. Yes, sir. You say always a human. Mm -hmm. What if that person is demonic as demons in them and he followed the demons request and he killed. Well, we're going to go down the steps to, yeah, towards that. So, yeah. But, but what you're going to see, even in scripture, there's always a human involved. Well, I, well, I know yeah. that. Yeah. Even if he's a demon to pet, uh, possessed. I thought you said that he can't control your will. We're, we're, th yeah, this is exactly the path of where we're going here. Yeah. And that's why I'm laying down that path. The question was, I, you know, as far as a human will being involved, uh, you know, somebody fo being fully demon possessed, what is that? You know, how, how does that work in, in, in interact um, and all of that? And so I, I want to bring that seat. I'm, I'm, I'm laying a found. That's why I said I wanted to lay a foundation here before we started going into anything else. And I'm, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. But geez, Bob keeps on asking questions. But, but no. Um, all right, man. I get my wife with me. I know she and her, She get we 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 have rotations of parents. Um, do you have do you have a paper, Ben? Yeah. Okay. okay. And so anyways, it's all, it's, it's always going to be that way. Now that now I, I do understand, is there times that um, a demonic spirit can take manifestation in a way that maybe you see it? Um, yes, that can take, that can happen. Um, is there times that a demon spirit can take control in a home? I've seen that too. Um, furniture moving, obstacles, doors closing, cabinets, all, all those types of things and haunting a house and all those things. Yeah, absolutely. That can take place. Okay. Um, but usually whenever that does take place, um, every single time you do have that, you don't have a devil 
occupying a location because he likes the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, he's not a real estate agent, location, 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 you know, because he likes the neighborhood. And, and <laughs> there you go, man, I got real estate agents on. And they're like, yeah, um, that's not the way that works. Usually what you'll find is somebody died, somebody committed suicide. And that spirit um, goes out. And exactly. And, it, and it'll, 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 it, it'll, it'll linger or it'll linger in the house. Hey guys, it, it'll linger in the location. And, and, and there's different, there's different things to that. I'm not going to go so much into that. That's a, that is a conversation. So that, you can just rebuke them and command them out. Well, the same way you could in anything else. You know, absolutely. And so, you know, that's, that, that is something that, um, that is real. I'm not, I'm not trying to bypass that, but that's not the conversation we're having tonight. First thing I want to talk about is regression. And then now, now, now this is the time. I, well, let me, before we start going down this list, is there any questions on what I've said so far? No. Anyone online? Any questions? No. Okay. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> one, one is just being. One's just being one. One's being one. <laughs> um, I got to get a newer laptop so I can just flip the camera around. Because yeah, yeah. one says it and it gives me that face like. <laughs> okay. So the first thing is regression. And I put on there on regression, battle against release and expression. Yes. A return to a former or less developed state reverting to the past. Okay. Let me just say something really quick on regression. On a, on a Bible understanding state, Adam was what? Made in the image of God and in likeness and in his image. Right? Okay. Adam fell. So what did that mean that he did? He regressed. He regressed. <laughs> so off the, so this, is, this is what I'm saying. On, on a natural thinking process, on a fallen state, this is where the enemy can now, you are now in his territory. Just because of that simple thing. You're on the wrong team. You got drafted and born on the wrong team. Bible says you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You've regressed from what man was originally made from. That puts you in the wrong team and in the game you don't want to be in. By default. By default. That doesn't make you demon possessed. It just makes you a regression of what man was originally made from on a simple platform. Okay, now we'll go into something more as far as emotional. And, and Jane, I know you've done counseling with, with a lot of people. Maybe you can kind of help me and, and give me some ideas and, and maybe diving deeper in some of this. Um, in, 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 in this, with regression, you ever see people just not be able to get past something? Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Some days. Well, not just no. We're, we're not. Some, kick his behind. That's why he got to kick his behind. <laughs> but you know, it, it's more of like it's not just the fact of, man, I had a rough day today. No, we're 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 you're you're stretching beyond that. It's you're you're not able to get. You're you're, you're you can't. Let's say you have an education. I'll just use that as example. You went to college, you have an education, you had this job, and then your industry ended. And now you've got to go into a different field. And now you're just kind of stuck and you're mad. And why did this? Or I wish I, my dad would have. I wish my mom would have. I wish God would have helped me through this. I would, and you're just kind of stuck in that state. You're just in this place where you were at. It's not where you're at now. You've regressed down to a lower state, and you, they're just people kind of stuck there. Yeah, like sometimes people, they learn a new behavior, like a, 
good behavior. They, they, they may have some bad behavior before, um, and then they learn something new mm -hmm. because they want to get rid of the old one. But sometimes when, it's, when the person under stress or some kind of trauma happened, then they will regress to the way where they were. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it takes a long time for them to come out and become the new one again. In, in, in technology, we would call default mode. You ever had to reset your phone because you had to go back to default mode? A lot. This is not very smart. It's not very smart. <laughs> well, I know sometimes my phone is very dumb and I, you know. Maybe it's operated. <laughs> sometimes the longer you allow it to stay there, it just becomes tormenting. That's exactly, that's, exactly. That's Yeah, and when you stay in that state, because think about it, okay, God made man in his likeness and in his image. So, for instance, the, 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 the huge fan of ability to have different emotions God gave us. And all of these things can be used for good or our destruction. Because if you're, in, in other words, if you, you, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to get angry. As parents, we get angry. As I, husbands, we get yeah. angry. I, I know mom never gets angry at daughter. I know that never happens. <laughs> you know, I know that doesn't take place because daughter's always perfect. But on those in the hypothetical, if that were to ever happen, you know, sometimes as parents, we have a right. But now here's the question. How do we handle it? So these, this huge fan of emotions are available to us. And they're godlike because God gave it to us. But Paul said it like this. Anger, sin not. When he's talking to fathers. Fathers, don't provoke your children. Don't poke at them. Didn't say not to correct them. It doesn't say not to do it. But at the point that you quench their spirit, you crush their spirit, God says, you've taken it way too far, Dad. But they can kick behind, right? They can kick behind. Oh, it absolutely says, you, Proverbs says, we can kick behind. Definitely, definitely. Remember that. Well, I'm used to it. <laughs> but, you know, but, but it's, it's really from like an emotional state, like what you were saying, is you get stuck in this place. You're at this, you're at this place, and you've got to go back. And you're kind of trying to always reset default mode. And you kind of just end up in this recycle pattern. Well, some people like to play the victim. I mean, they just never get yep. out of the victim state ever. I know people like that. They, they, that's where they want to be. Well, they want and that's a great point, Mom. And to this, if this are steps for demonic oppression for people, is for a person, could it be steps for demonic oppression or possession of a community of people? So if you see people that are constantly in a community and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a message that's constantly in that mode of regression, is it possible that the enemy can have his way in that environment? Absolutely. Okay, see, now, now we can broaden it from a person to a community, a way of thinking, a social environment, okay? Make sense? Any questions? Any clarification? Anybody want to say say something? Define that a little bit more. Define that a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, like what, what he lives matter. Well, well, that's that's one of many. I'm sorry, but it, it's 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 okay because here here here's the reality. That statement is a, a correct statement. No. What he said is Black Lives Matter. That statement is a good statement. Yeah, it is a good statement because absolutely they do. They do matter. Yeah. It's well, there's, but hold on. But there's other things beyond just that, just that, that, well, nobody said that, Bob. So I let's know. not even try to even assume, <laughs> you know, but he, here's the reality to that. There's a lot of things I can, I can point out in Christian communities that we do, yeah. that we end up in regression states in our churches. Hmm. We end up in regression states of our teachings. Because here's the thing, if all the church teaches is in a carnal mindset, 
then where does the enemy have a playground now? The in mind. The in your mind. In your mind. Of the people that are supposed to be the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting how that works. <laughs> and, and, the, and, and, and all of us say, you know, as far as within the world and the community, Christian community and everything, whether it's politics or religion or, 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 or social climate, or whatever, and all of us are going, well, that's the norm. No, it's not. It's the enemy's playground, and he's having fun with it. Number two, the, Juan, did that answer your question? No, yours is not. Okay, okay. Let me let me go. Let me kind of go through because I want to try to get through this today, and then and then we'll go we'll go back and, and retouch. Maybe some of these other things might bring to light um, some maybe some understanding on the regression part. Okay. The second thing would be repression. The restraint, prevention, or, or inhibition of a feeling or quality, the process of suppressing a thought or desire in oneself, that it remains unconscious. Okay. Um, if somebody can go to Ephesians 4.30, and then and find, when you find it, uh, if you can read it. While you're doing that, I want to talk about some things with repression. It's basically to restrain, prevent, inhibit feelings or, qual or, 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 or quality, process of suppressing a thought, desiring oneself so that it remains unconscious. Okay. A, a, a repression would be, have you ever people that just kind of get secluded? They stop talking. I see that. Yeah. Okay. You have Ephesians 430. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay, read loud. Okay. Loud and proud, sister. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Okay. Beautiful. Grieve not. I want to. I just want to record you over and over again. Just have it looped, yeah. Jerry. Um, why is it? Why did I bring that scripture up? God made you to have emotion, and it's okay. What was that scripture? E Ephesians four thirty. God made you to be like Him. God gave you the ability to express yourself. God gives you the ability. Okay, this is what I, 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 as Christians, we are not thermometers. We're thermostats. What I mean by that is I know a lot of Christians that are very spiritual that can tell what the temperature is of the spirit of the room. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my, my. You know, it's like, oh, I feel an evil spirit. Oh, I feel this. Okay, then change the temperature. Jesus is in you. What do you, what do I care what the evil spirit is doing there? Then change it. You're not a thermometer. You're a thermostat. If it's too hot and it needs to be cooled down, then cool it. If it's too cold and needs to be heated up, then heat it up. You're the difference maker. Stop telling me what temperature it is for me to give you a pat on the back. I don't care what it is. Change it. Mm, yes. So, but repression is that part where it gets pushed down. And so you'll see people, before they go into depression, you'll start seeing, you know, I know our, I, we've gone through this with our kids, just through that they're growing up, watching them go through different stages of their life. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, they'll go into that mode. And quiet or secluded or even, you know, they're in some, some of it's normal. I get it. Um, you know, especially I don't have a daughter, so I have a you know I yet. yet I don't have a daughter yet. Um, but at the same time, you know I so because my you know my wife she grew up in a house of boys, so there's a no you know you don't lock your door. If you lock your door, I'm gonna kick it down. See, I can't do that with That's with a, right. yeah <laughs> you know. But I don't have I don't have a daughter because to my daughter I'm. I'm going to be like, honey, <laughs> may I come in, you know, exactly right. because it's different, it, you know, it, it's different. And like my niece today, my, I was, I was, she, she, she can't lock her door either. well, but she, yeah, but there's, yeah, there's different. multiple girls in the house. Not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's different, but like you grew up in my boys. So my kids, you know, 
I'm uh. still gonna knock on that door. I'm sorry, I'm still knocking on that door. Well, your mom. I'm like, I knocked on my door. There's no problem. We'll see. But we have like, a no lock door at our house, too. <laughs> I'm going to bring some spray because all that fanta smell and stuff. I'm like, I'm coming well, in. Well, like, well like, like, for instance, you know, I'm I'm going to give a hypothetical because I, I'm just some, there's a person in my head that comes to mind when I'm about to say this and it's not me. Okay. So I'm going to clarify what I'm about to say is not me. It's somebody else. I'm being honest. Okay. It's like, I knew a dad who had a bunch of daughters and so he didn't feel comfortable walking around in his tidy whities around his around all of his girls in a household full of girls, yeah. right? And his daughters didn't feel comfortable. Well, actually, they probably felt a little more comfortable than he did, but they, they were a little bit more open and everything else. And because to them it was mom, and then and then you know as they grew older, they would just tell dad, "Don't come upstairs." And the whole upstairs belonged to mom and the girls, you know, and, and, and everything like that. And were, you know, and so dad was a prisoner in his own house. And, but it wasn't me walking around my tidy whities It was somebody else because I don't have girls. And so I didn't know why I went down there, down that path. <laughs> it's kind of like I went halfway there. I'm like, dude, I, I'm all right, whatever. I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> Everyone's like, please, I'm pulling my eyes out. Um, <laughs> so churches can repress with, with an authoritative style of ministry okay. repress people yeah. repress giftings mm -hmm. repress joy mm -hmm. repress growth uh, because somebody has an ego they can repress that push it down restrain it prevent it no emotion I know there's certain um denominations that will repress emotion in an environment of worship. They won't allow the exuberance. They don't allow, you know, and to me, there, what bothers me is when churches, when it's all the emotion and it's all the exuberance and there's no substance. I want substance. I want reality. But at the same time, I love exuberance. I'm Mexican, dude, and my blood runs hot. I love Mexican Spanish, especially worship Spanish worship music. Forget about it, dude. I'm a, I'm a nutcase. I'm, I'm that guy running the aisles. I love it. You know, but if I'm ministering to somebody you at a grocery store, you know, I'm not singing coritos, you know, and, and all of that or in the middle. Doing this. Yeah. I don't have a white coat in my trunk, you know. Why are you messing up my hair, man? Get your hand off my forehead. It's all oily. But, but no, and, and it's just, it, it's, churches can do that. Theologies can do that. Thought processes can do that. And guess what? Homes can be that way. I've known of homes where father gets home and it gets quiet. Father gets home and there's no smiles. Father gets home and there's no joy. Everyone's loud. Everyone's happy. Everyone's, ah, dad gets home and it's a graveyard. Why? Because everyone's being repressed. Wow. And if you've ever lived in a repressed environment, how do the people that are feeling repressed feel towards the person that just changed the environment? Good. Not good. That's very irritating. Believe. So all these different things begin to take place. And now dad, who's repressed himself and repressing others, just allowed the enemy to just have, a, have his field day in that house. There's no restraint. Now, I'm not saying that it, all of a sudden, because it's a repressed environment, it's full of devils. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is these are things that give the enemy leeway to be able to operate in our homes, in our finances, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our child rearing, um, in your growth and your growing up. These are all things that take place. The reason why I read Ephesians 4 and 3, all of these things grieve the spirit of God. Can you give an explanation of grieving? Like another oh, grieve the spirit? Yeah. I'll tell my kids, 
you know, like, okay, I'll give a, I'll give a dumb example. Um, if our kids went into the, in, into our room, which this has never happened. If they went into our room and said, mother, father, may I have a glass of water today? Right. You know what our response would be? You'd be like, Justin, shut up. Go get, the, go get some water. And, you know, angel, what are you talking about? And yeah. then, okay. Then they, then, then they went, well, the, oh, it wouldn't the first time it would annoy me the first time. You know, and this, you know, it would probably be, it wouldn't even annoy me. It would just be like, they're playing a joke. Second time. All right, dude, two days in a row. Come on, man. Really? Third, third day. I'm like, dude, you're waking me up for this. Right. Fourth day. Like he's being serious. Fifth day. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you asking me if you can eat in your home? Why are you asking me if you can drink water in your own home? Why are you asking me if I can be joyful, if I can be helpful, if I can be cheerful, if I can be happy, if I can be now think now, as I'm saying that guys, how many times as Christians do we live in a repressed state in the spirit before God, because you feel that you have no leeway to live before him. You, that in okay. If, if repression means to hold down and push down, God, Jesus introduced the concept of father in Matthew chapter five. I didn't introduce that. Jesus did. So if he said about going to him as father, you have to understand you don't have a God who happens to be father. Just hear, hear what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this again. Hear it carefully. You don't have God who happens to be father. Because that father could be father to everyone else but you. You have a father that happens to be God. There's a difference. Your God is father. Not this God is a father. So it would be silly for your boys to ask you permission to do what they've been granted and given the ability to have and do. They live in that home. They are home. So as a believer, for us to regress and suppress what is there, and you're sitting there going, God, can I, God, am I, God, am I supposed to smile today? God, God, can I, can I smile today? God, is it, is it okay if I enjoy today? God's like, what's wrong with you? Are you a lunatic? Enjoy the day. So it's like. Like within your own home, you're acting as if you're a guest mm -hmm. when you're not. Or a prisoner. It's your home. Or a prisoner. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a quick example here before we go on to the next there one. Our home stuff. But instead of home, it'd be the spirit, right? Exactly. What, yeah. what we're talking about is is more of in 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 the life of the spirit of you know in the life of a believer. I want to show you guys a quick scripture. A okay. Let Let me just read this real quick in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter four, verse 14. Hebrews four, verse 14. Thanks, Anthony, for texting me this scripture, bro. Well, I appreciate it. It's a good one. You picked the right one right now. Anytime. You know me. You know how I do. I know how you do it. We know how you roll. It says... Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Catch this in verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Okay. Why is that important? Because Christians believe this scripture means that I go into the King's court. I bow myself with all humility, father or King, don't kill me. Don't stab me. Don't behead me. And I'm going to walk into it. And then once I'm done requesting what I request, I walk backwards this way out of the kingdom or out of his throne room 
and then I have to leave again. Paul never said, once you go in, you have to leave. He said, come in. Oh, I'm not, I say Paul, but I don't know if it's Paul or Luke or who wrote Hebrews. But whoever wrote Hebrews, here's his statement. He says, come in. Where does he say you have to leave? When did he say you have to leave? Why did we assume we have to leave? So when we talk to God, we live in, in our union relationship with Christ. We have this assumption that God is this vacation location. When the Bible says you are the habitation of the spirit of God, meaning where he lives. Right here. So he, and, and then understand the context of what he's writing in Hebrews. What is, what he's the la I'll read the last part. Okay. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So what he's saying is come in and you'll find some help. I'm going to read to you another scripture. First John chapter four, verse 17. First John chapter four, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Catch this. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is therefore, there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear because fear involves torment. What is he saying? I can walk in because my father invited me in. I don't have to leave unless you choose to leave. He never told you there was an exit door. And I hear that from Christians all of the time when they say, but how can I fall away from God? How can I, you know, there is scriptures about how to fall away from God and, and, and falling in sin and all these other things and all that stuff. There, we do find that, but you know what? There's not very much. You know why? Because I believe with all of my heart, God is pretty optimistic that once you come and taste <laughs> of what is good that you, why in the world would you leave? He did include some descriptions of those that do walk away, but honestly, it's not very much. As far as people that walk away, you know, in the faith, not people that reject it. Well, that makes sense because they don't know, you know, um, then I had a, a, a snickerdoodle with, with peanut butter earlier today. It was a snickerdoodle peanut butter cookie. How was it? You have no idea because you didn't taste it, right? So to the world, they never tasted it. So that makes sense why they would possibly reject it. But to those that have ever dove in and actually ate the snickerdoodle with peanut butter and a, and a glass of milk, all right, people are getting hungry now. But, and there is banana bread, guys, except for all of the Zoom viewers. But it isn't the same. Is it? But exactly, exactly. And so to the one that has, I'm not, I'm not saying the one that's been churched. I'm saying if you've ever been born again, the experience is like anything else, like nothing else. There's nothing else like it. It's transformational. It's encouraged. It just transforms everything about it. And never do I find God says, come in, but here's the back door. Never do you find that in the New Testament. We've created a back door. Scripture never has created that. Now, if you want to kick through the sheetrock, yeah, yeah, that's that's your leg, your foot, and your hammer. But he didn't hand it to you. You chose to. Okay, what time is it here? Eight forty. Oh my lord. Okay. Any questions? I got through three. I totally thought I'd do it. We're going to go, yeah, we're going into suppression now.
Anything on 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 re uh, repression before we move on? Am I a lunatic? Does this make sense at all? Okay. Okay. Vanya, are we okay? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all right. Thank you, Vanya. Um, suppression. To abnormally squeeze down, to crush, to conceal, as to suppress information. And here's the best way I would put it. You ever see people just run out of gas in life? You ever see people run out of gas in their marriage? You ever see people run out of gas as a parent? You ever see people run out of gas in, the, in their different environments? That's a suppression. Again, I'm not saying that that, that means that you've got a, a little red guy with a cape and a pointy you know, tail and a pitchfork on your back. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is I'm trying to put some flags for you to understand that when you emotionally, because we all find ourselves in these moments where emotionally it happens. Well, my point is not that these emotions don't happen. I'm trying to give you information so when these points do happen, you can react to it. You can pick it up. This is how the enemy works. Was somebody going to say something online? What did somebody? No. Okay. Mike, is there any anything? Are you are you you guys good? Any questions? I'm good. Okay. And that's that's the easiest way I would put it. Is just you run out of gas. Okay. Any any is that one understandable? Kind of we're, we're there on that. Okay. We'll stop at this last one with depression. Because depression, I think, would kind of be one that we are all familiar with, with a lot of people, and kind of so you hear about that word depression. Yeah. I think the thing that I don't like about it in these times right now is that they're like making it like it's a normal thing, like it's an okay thing. Like, oh yeah, I'm so depressed. Like, it's just so, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, you don't have to have it like besides there's a period of time oh, most of the kids when they're active they call them ADHD yeah when they're just being careful yeah. yeah. I'm hearing that a lot too and it's now almost normal mm -hmm. I mean if it helps my son not be such a terrible yeah. you know <laughs> if it here's my thing if it didn't if it didn't exist when I was a kid it's fake yeah. right <laughs> You know, but you, you know, but no, but seriously, on as far as with the, that, that word is just thrown out so open, so consistent. It's almost um, like an escape or, or like an excuse for people to use for their behavior. Exactly. Like, oh, I'm just depressed. That's why I'm acting that way. Yeah. And then, and they might just be. They might have some repression. They might have some suppression. They might have be regressing a little bit. And immediately they're going straight for this place of a word that is consistent, um, that Hollywood has made a lot of movies about and a lot of movies on, on depression. And it becomes just part of our normal way of thinking and speaking. And actually I hear a lot of parents use that too. Like, oh, it's okay. He's just depressed or, oh, leave them alone. They're just depressed. And I'm thinking, okay, so what? Do, you can't just leave it at that. No, you know, we we've had we've had that, you know, as far as with with within our own kids growing up, you know, different struggles or different things, you know, and it's there's times that I have, uh, okay, I'm without getting super weird on this moment here. Um, and, you know, there was, and my son's in the room. I think I've told him this story. Uh, this was several years ago. We were in Tracy, and I, I was asleep, and I seen above the kids' room, the boys' room. Like it, it was kind of like I was in a movie, like a camera. Like I was looking down on their bedroom from the outside, and I was I was completely asleep, and I was looking down. Here's their bedroom. Looking down at it, like I'm looking through the ceiling as they're asleep. They weren't doing anything. They were just asleep. But as I was there hovering above in my dream, 
I could see just spirits of darkness around their room. This was, and I'm just dead asleep. I, I'm, I'm just completely asleep here. It was a dream, right? It was a dream or a vision, whatever, however we would call it or say it. But I'm looking down on it and I seen it. And as I seen it, I woke up. And when I woke up, I woke up speaking in tongues, very loud, very authoritative, very forceful. And then I got up and I went to go check and they were okay. They, they were asleep. And the next morning, I remember asking them, and I didn't even, I don't even know if I even told you in the moment of that moment, but I remember asking them, how was your guys, how was your guys night? And I remember, I don't know if it was you or Justin, one of you guys, or both of you said, man, I don't know. I had, had rough sleep and I couldn't sleep last night. You know, I was having bad dreams or something, you know? And so I'm not trying to just make it all wooky, spiry, scary, spiritual stuff, but it does happen. And so sometimes this is where as parents, especially that, that we take that authority or even over our spouses, over our family members, over our friends, mm -hmm. that we can take that in the moment and begin to intercede on their behalf, that we can in, enter the fight. You know, when I was growing up, if one of your homies was getting in it, you jumped in. That's just how it goes. Well, that in the spirit realm, we do the same thing that we back up for one another, that we pray for one another, that we encourage for one another. And, and, and in that, because this is something that, that we are starting to see consistently in our culture and our society more and more and more and more and more, especially right now, because we have an environment of people. The, the funniest thing is this, the first people that tried to kill Jesus were politicians. They weren't religious politicians. Herod, when Jesus was a baby, the wise men came, right? They went and told, you know, and, and Herod heard, they went to ask Herod, where's baby Jesus, the king? And he said, oh, who? Oh, he's the new king of the Jews. Really? Well, I want to worship him too. As the Bible says that in his heart, he, went and he wanted to go out and kill him. Mm -hmm. So the first time we see an aggression towards Jesus was political. Political motivation was the first attempt at his life. And I'm just saying, it's not the only time it's ever happened in history where political agendas have been under the influence of demonic elements. And can I say, and will I say this? Yes, Republican and Democrat, both. It's human, exactly. Because they're already, just because somebody professes Christianity does not mean they're children of God are born again. Right. Doesn't mean it. So that means political elements are already operating from a play, platform of regression. I thought you were talking about depression. No, no, I am. But what I'm saying is political elements are already just on that basic platform. They're already mm -hmm. operating from a regressed state from Adam, from a fallen nature. Yes. Are, that, that's, that's just the general platform that all of us are dealing with. But with the depression side, so then you begin to see this push of these agendas. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Or let me say, let me say this before I ask the question, because I know we've got to close up here. Um, the average income impacted by clinical depression in America is twelve dollars to $15,000 of lost revenue per person. Okay. If somebody that's dealing with depression or clinical depression, the average amount of revenue that somebody loses in that calendar year on average is between 12 to $15,000. You go, well, how, how do you calculate that? Okay, meds, uh, unemployment, um, overspending, uh, taking days off of vacation when you're not with no pay because you can't get out of bed, 
because you got to deal with other issues because so this is how the cdc is calculating all of these numbers this was the 2018 number that the average this is not during pandemic numbers i don't even know what that is yeah that's not <laughs> the two, cdc came out with this number of 2018 the average revenue loss because of clinical depression is twelve to fifteen thousand dollars of household income. If you're already depressed and then you can't pay your bills, where do you end up? Street. Suicidal, farther into depression, or crime. Right. All of these avenues that begin to that the enemy do, begins to open doors of situations. Be because of an emotional state, because again, your soul is the speaker and some spirit is going to try to connect either the spirit of God or the spirit of the enemy. And he's going to use your loudspeaker to be loud and clear. That's how this works. So I'm going to, I know we kind of touched on depression. I'm not going to go any farther than that. Um, we'll pick up next week. Um, because I, I want us, I, I know we're gonna get ready to leave. I do want us to minister and pray and take some time to just pray one for another, real quick. Um, Book of James makes a statement. We'll go to James, real quick. And if you guys are at, at home, I'll, I'll pray. If you're single, uh, I'll pray with, if you're by yourself. I'll pray with you over the, over the phone before, you know, and let some of the others, we'll pray together. If, um, if you've got, you know, with the spouse, I want you to just connect with your spouse and, and just pray with them uh, real quick. And we're going to pray here as well. But James says, makes a statement in uh, James chapter five, verse 13. James chapter five, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses or faults one to another and pray one for another so that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you know i'm i'm gonna pray as far as on the internet with you guys and then as couple i have a, I'll, I'll, I have a question oh yeah go, go for it how did i, I is the oil actual <laughs> is the oil actual oil like i know i've heard of like praying prayer oil or like they rub stuff on crisco you know no um oil. <laughs> oil. yeah you know he, <laughs> And some, and some people are just oily. No, um, no. Here, here's the reality to that text. Book of James is what they call a prime for a believe for young believers. It's it's a prime book, like a pump, like a well. You prime it to get it started. The book of James was actually written, if you read it through, for young Christians. So a lot of what you see in the book of James is very tangible things that you see, very practical. Because anointing oil does nothing in and of itself, either than cook your carne asada. You know, as far as it's just oil. Yeah, it's just oil. But what it's trying to represent in that moment is a spiritual reality to a young Christian. That they're going to anoint him with oil, just showing them the tangible reality, the touchable reality. That, guys, I'm going to do this in the physical, but understand in the spirit, you have been anointed by the spirit of God in Christ. And so it gives a young Christian a, 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 a mental picture to understand. That's why you don't really see it played out at all. You meant you, there's one other mention, I think, in the Gospel of Mark. But that's why Jesus is not making all these references of oil. Paul doesn't make references of oil. Uh, John, or it's just that statement. But he's making it in James because the book was written to young Christians and how to walk out their faith. So notice what it is. If you're, he's saying, if you're sick, if you're a young Christian, you have some issues, call for those that are mature in Christ. They're going to do this for you as an example to show you a natural thing 
so you can understand a spiritual reality. That's why, because it would be silly that if I was walking down the street and I seen someone and they, like Isaac was saying earlier, you know, this person was, you know, going through a sickness and I went, man, bro, Jesus would love to heal you, but I forgot my oil. Yeah. <laughs> right? The gospel is very practical, very real. And if you don't got Crisco or mortal oil, just slap your hand on it. <laughs> Carry some in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> the oil is just... She has it in her purse. And if she, like, walks into a place where she feels like los, los espíritus, she'll... Oh, yeah, no, I know. And I'm looking at her and I'm like... No. I mean, if you want to moisturize, it's good for your skin. Now, yeah, and, and I don't want to belittle anybody either. Because of oil, honey. Yeah. I don't want to belittle anybody because I understand in the Pentecostal, and I know, Mike, you're going to say something, and I'll, I'll give it to you right now. I, I don't want to belittle anyone. because, But here's, here's the reality. I understand where that comes from. But what I, and, and it's like anything else, all, what it is is training wheels. And for us to grow from that point, to the reality that we don't need these other things. We have Christ. Yeah, That's my point. And I'm not trying to, because I come from Pentecostal churches that will, you know, have the, the, the healing oil or whatever you use oil. And I don't, and if I was at someone's church and that's what they did, I don't have a problem with it. I just know when I'm at Walmart, I don't need it. Mike, what were you, you going to say something? I was just going to say, it's a point of contact and, you know, it's a representative of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a, a, a visual presentation of a spiritual principle if you will absolutely and absolutely and that's exactly what james is saying was somebody gonna say something oh okay um it's a, it's a representation of a spiritual reality that's it you know but there are there are some people that really 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 take it seriously and it's over the top yeah you know where they can't operate yes to minister without it and that's not no, that's not what it's for. No, it's yeah. If you have it, that's great. That's fine. Use it. It's good. There's no problem. I mean, there's I have a Bible for it. Yeah. But if you get locked into that law that you can't minister without oil, the dude, yeah. you, then it's just it's your faith is in oil and not in Christ, and you've lost the point. Yeah. You know, and and that's that's what I'm saying. You know, because anything faith into anything other than Christ is the wrong form of worship. Yeah. It's a wrong focus. Yeah. Um, I wear a white coat and I have it in my trunk though, just in case. <laughs> a what? A white coat. Right, why a white coat? The <laughs> 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 Angel Evangelist has got a white coat, you know, and then I throw it at, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm being sarcastic. I'm, I'm being mean. I'm just being sarcastic. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, like this is what I, I, I bought this Star Wars shirt and I bought it for what it says. I am one with the force and the force is one with me. I bought it because I know it's Star Wars, but here's the reality. I bought it because it's true to me. I am one with the force and the force is one with me. I'm not separate from him. He's not separate from me. We are absolutely together. Yeah, I, yeah, but I did it so that it's a play on which, so that as a Christian, you understand this reality. It's not apart from me. What? What's that lightsaber doing back there? No, I've got lightsabers all up in this house. Trust me. What? What was that? It's the belief. Say that again. That's kind of the same with oil, isn't it? It's the belief. So you believe that the oil helps one. Doesn't that just make it stronger? It wouldn't make it stronger, but it limits you. But yes. But isn't the point for the, for the person that's getting the healing? So in that case, yes. That was for the young Christian. But what I'm saying is the person ministered. To me, it kind of sounded like uh, with, so say when you pray for someone and, mm -hmm. and, you, and you would say to lay hands on them, wouldn't it be the same to not lay hands on them too? Because the power is within not yep. laying on them. And there's times, and, and, and your, your experience is there's times, Juan, that I have actually laid hands on people. And there's times that I, obviously I pray for people over the phone and I can't. Yeah, yeah. The same, right? and the, the outcome should be the same. I will say this though. I met one guy that he was like, 
hey man, um, can we call this person and do it on Zoom? Why? Because I'm more powerful on Zoom. And I'm like, what in the world? What are, what are you talking about? You're more powerful. You're powerful at all. It's Jesus. You know, the moment you begin to think that, you're already whack. But it's the belief. <laughs> you know, we have to realize the uh, scripture about the centurion. Exactly. To heal his daughter. Um, Jesus wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But it's, a, it's the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Jesus gave the word to the centurion. And the, when he was like, let me go to your house. And the centurion was like, no, nah, it's cool. Just speak it. I know if you said it, we're good. And that, that's a principle that we need to understand. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, oh, here's one more thing. It, you know how we talk about, you know, praying for prayer cloths or whatever. And they, you know, we'll send it out to someone. And, you know, we've had Alex come on, on here. We, you know, we minister, we prayed on some cloths. Somebody was sick. They had COVID and they come out of COVID and they got healed. It was just a few weeks ago when we told that story. Well, here's, here's, here's the reality. Where did they get the idea from the prayer cloths? Oh, in, the, in, in the book of Acts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Paul, when the Bible says that Paul would take cloths from off of himself and hand it over for people for either some demon possessed or they were sick, where did Paul get that idea from? Yeah. From Jesus, right? Well, maybe the from Jesus, how? How from Jesus? From the oh, because the story of the issue of blood, yeah. right? When she touched the cloth, right? How about the fact that the woman that with an issue of blood touched oh, touched his cloth yeah. and got healed, and then the Christians were like, "Hey, uh, maybe there's something to this thing." <laughs> and all it was was like you said, you know, when when you, when you said about a white coat because he's a scientist. Guys, here, here's the reality. Try some stuff because the Bible says, "Greater work shall you do," because you because I go to the Father. I know, the, I know somebody that had the flu, somebody would be kind to them, bought them Starbucks, didn't pray for them, didn't minister to them, didn't tell them, bought them Starbucks and handed it to them. And when they drank the Starbucks, all of a sudden, this person looks at them and goes, what did you do? What are you talking about? You did something. Did you, did you pray for? Yeah. When they got the Starbucks, they said, they decided when they get this Starbucks and touch this cup, they're going to get healed in Jesus' name. Why? Because this person that was doing it was trying, because here's, you can go, well, that sounds weird. But God got bigger in both of those people's eyes like that. Because why? Faith works. That's, it. That's the reality. Faith works. People talk about, oh, I believe, I believe. You believe, but I see nothing. Faith, it always has an end result. There'll always be an end result with faith. There'll be transformation. There'll be restoration. There'll be joy. There'll be peace. There, there, there'll be all of those things. Faith has a result because faith is what God stated, stated it to be. Without faith, we don't please him. So it has an end result. Right. Does, always will. Every time. I, I see people that believe here in their mind they theoretically believe and i see no result which tells me there's no faith because james says it this way you want to say you want to tell me you believe i'll show you my faith how by my works not the fact that my works are faith but faith through me produces a work and that work looks like jesus Every single time. And you go, well, but I prayed and know what nothing happened. Then do it again. But it didn't happen. Then, okay, do it again. But it still didn't happen. Okay, go for it. Now you're not, see, here's, here's, here's clue number one. If nothing happened after the first or second time, maybe there's a warfare happening. Dig in. Go to war. Yeah. And there's times when you can do that to some people, but they're not believers it doesn't sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and you can do it to believers and sometimes it does and does not happen and you may only see this person one time in your life you know and you pray for them and you you've just got to believe that you've changed something in their life well because here's the reality if i run into someone one time and i'm never going to see them again i will you'll never hear it come out of my mouth to say that it didn't happen or it didn't work <laughs> because 
I was obedient, I'll never see them again. That's it. Right? I, I don't know. You My I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna say they I'm not gonna say, hey, this person they got out of the wheelchair. If I didn't see them, I'm not gonna say that. Right. But I'm not gonna believe that nothing happened. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Change yeah. lives. Yeah. Tell these young ladies today. You can change people's lives by who you are and what you say and what you do. Absolutely. You know, and, and you don't even know it. You yeah. change people's lives. Which way are you going to change it? Absolutely. And it's so important. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for everyone online real quick. And then, you know, if, if we can just take a few minutes, cause I want us to just kind of find someone real quick. We're just going to pray with one another. Um, I know everyone on, on, cause you guys are home, you know, Anthony, I'm sorry, bro, but you're going to have to pray Vanya. I'm sorry. Get the, but, uh, get the, oil, oil, oil. Get the oil, Anthony. You're going to need it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the Anthony. I'm going to get the couple of gallons I got. Hey Anthony, dip your whole arms and hands in. Taking a break. You don't need the oil. You're a good man. But but no, if we can, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray just with you guys. Um, but just take a minute to pray with your wife. You know, and and I would say do it like do an A and B. You know, A pray for. And here's here's something that's very important. Okay, guys, and, and hear me out. If somebody's praying for you, and I see this all the time, like somebody will go, can you pray for me? I, do, I have people do this all the time. And they go, okay, can you pray for me? Yeah. And then I begin to pray, and then they begin to pray for themselves. And, I, and, and I'm saying this out loud so that way you don't do it because I, I, I do this where I'll stop and go, stop. Stop praying. I need you to receive what I'm about to speak into you right now, right? And I'm not going to say, I don't say this to those people, but here's the reality. And I want you to just understand how faith works. If what we prayed before worked, we wouldn't be in the line to be prayed for. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something disconnecting in that moment that they need help in. So the help is why you came. So let me be that help. And allow the comforter to comfort, be silent and just absorb and receive. And I'm going to speak life and health over you. So when you're praying for somebody and let, and people do that, especially Pentecostals, I'll pray for them. And then all of a sudden talking in tongues. And I'm like, dude, stop. Stop. Pray in tongues when I'm done. Stop. Receive for a moment. Okay? Because if, you're, if the, your sponge is too, if too, if too moist, you can't absorb anything. I need you to absorb something for a moment. And we do that all the time. And I see people. So I'm just giving you some insight. When, when you're ministering to somebody, it's very important. Because this is where a word of, no, word of knowledge or word of wisdom may come forth and they need to hear it. Well, you made a good point. But, you know, we say if we pay for family members, some of that, and sometimes they'll do the same thing. It's dawn on me. Yeah, stop them. I always do. Kind, I mean, you can just kindly stop them. Just go, brother, can I just, just receive? Let me just pray with you. That's a really good point. And, and it's very helpful for them because as you speak scripture into them, as you speak love into them, they're hearing it. Because sometimes people just need to stop and they need to receive and they don't know how. And this is lesson one. Let me help you. Let me help you. So, all right. Um, let, um, well, you asked me in the first place to pray for me, so why should I be praying for myself at that point, right? What, what was that? Yeah. If you ask somebody to pray for you, shut up. Let them pray <laughs> for you. Well, I know, but like you said. Exactly. <laughs> but it's the truth, and but people don't see it that way, but it, it's just like, just receive. Just receive. I'm here to help. <laughs> You know, and but and sense. yeah, like but in, but we grew up in Pentecostal church, Dana, and we're just like, okay, guys, let's pray. And ten people are talking in tongues, right? And we're all seeing, you know, individually. And it's like, instead of, can I pray, and then you pray, and then you pray for me, and then now we can all of a sudden someone's going to sing a psalm, someone's going to say something, someone's going to, and all of a sudden now the gifts are in operation, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful transition, mm -hmm. and there's a harmony there. Yeah. But sometimes. If there's 10 people, nine of them got to shut up for a minute, you know, to allow God to speak. 
Because how is he going to speak? Through me, through you, through us. Very seldom does he speak through an audible voice. So, uh, or he speaks to little chubby babies at Ryan Anthony's house. He said he was praying right now, that's all. I know, he was talking to him. I heard him. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going to uh, just pray oh, uh, as far as online with, with everyone. Um, I'm going to stop the recording right now, and that way everyone's a little bit more comfortable. How do I stop the recording? Oh.